Hey everyone, <clears throat> I was doing some more uh, fine tuning on instructional videos, which this one is on um, using colored pencils and doing reflective properties. Doing glass is hard because it's transparent and it's reflective. <laughs> so you have, uh, you have to look out for uh, the main thing is the transparency. And the other thing you have to look out for is the reflective uh, part of it because it doesn't absorb light. You'll have a lot of white space that is being reflected in weird ways. So I broke it down for you, layering colors as always. So enjoy. <laughs> All right, class, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, coloring, so layering, coloring, as always, and, but we're going to be talking about transparent um, objects or reflective objects. So what I got here is I got a glass vase, and I'm going to start coloring it in. All the time I tell you, do not use black. This is one of the times is that, that it will be the exception to the rule. Uh, you're going to need black to kind of shade uh, certain areas. You're not going to use it as much as you might think. You're still using layered color. Basically, when you're coloring um, glass, you're going to want a light blue like you see what I'm using now. You want a dark blue, a purple, and a black. Purple will really help uh, if you put that down first and use a black. It will really help darken your, your blacks up quite a bit if you're layering that color underneath and even over top of your painting. So here we go. I'm going over all my lines using the cerulean blue or the light blue. And I'm, right now you can see I've outlined it. I'm starting to shade the glass a little bit. But I'm getting my highlights where the reflective light is. The problem with doing transparencies and doing reflective light objects is A, reflective light. The, how the light reflects off the, off the surface. It can... It, makes weird and unique shapes uh, sometimes they don't make a whole lot of sense uh, the other thing if it's transparent you see through it so it's hard to shade something that you see through but here's how to break it down we're gonna shade you're gonna use a lot more white space because it is transparent but you're gonna shade it and tint it uh, with that light blue that light blue is gonna be the foundation and basically you're gonna use shadows so right now, what I'm doing is I'm going to do a little bit of line work lightly, and I'm getting the shape and the form of my uh, cylinder here that's made out of glass. I'm also shading it in, and that's probably as far as I'm going to go because I want that white space to represent that transparency. So, uh, again, see how I'm doing this? My hand's locked. I'm using my arm, and I'm taking it to myself. That gives you more control. That gives you a better ability to make straight lines. You can see here I'm shading the bottom. It's see-through, so you can see through the object. And I'm adding more light down the center. You're going to really want to uh, look at where the light is reflecting. And understand that depending on the day, depending on the time of day, depending on how you're sitting, it's going to depend on how that light reflects and how those shapes look. It's not going to be the same from day to day. There could be just one little adjustment and that light is going to react to that glass in a totally different way and reflect a totally different way. So I recommend taking photos and working off photos so you have a more constant, um, a better um, constant basis for looking for all those uh, reflected light pockets that you're going to have. So you can see here, uh, I'm talking about tapering here. So another shading technique is a tapering, tapered line. Characters use it all the time, see it's dark. And that, what you do is you're placing the pencil down hard where you want it the darkest and then you're flicking your wrist 
So on the side here of that clot of that um, uh, light pocket, I was pressing down hard and I was flicking like in a circle, a little cylinder, so I could maintain the shape and get the feel of the shape of the glass object and still have that dark contrast against the, the light. The reflected light is, is going to be bright, so you're going to want some of your darkest darks, your darkest shadows, right against that light pocket because it's going to make it pop out. You're going to have that starch contrast that um, right next to each other, the dark versus the light. So here what you see I'm doing, I'm going over my light blue with a dark blue. And I'm just shading it in, I'm adding more line work. You see already that it's starting to pop more. It looked good just with the one color, but we, color has all different kinds of intensities. And you want to use your colors to get those intensities, to mimic those intensities on your page. You can see here I have it dark on one side or a little darker on one side of the light and it helps bring out those uh those light pockets like i've been calling them all right you can see the difference one side because I, I was showing how to do this one side is is with the two colors one side's with the one colors you can definitely see how the light pockets now are popping off on the one side opposed to the other side now i'm using black okay you want to use black sparingly. You want it in the darkest spots. And notice that I'm having that tapered line as well. I'm getting a nice dark line against it. I'm sharpening my pencil here. Uh, you can see down here, I have a line coming from the brick on up, but it tapers off. It's dark down there, it goes up. On the top, it's dark up there and goes down. I'm not overly reinforcing my line work with the black. Your eye is going to make uh, that adjustment. You'll see that and it will make it look more transparent. It's going to make it look more like glass because you're connecting it together and having that open space there uh, is going to tell your eye and your mind that it is glass and it is a transparent object. Same thing with all the little light bubbles here. I have dark lines here and there where I think shadow is. You know, light comes from the top. That's where the sun is. Your shadow's at the bottom. So you want to think about where your shadows are. So I'm probably talking here.